What if I told you Magento is dead, but long live Adobe Commerce? We've already been speaking some heretical words here over the past few weeks with our launch of our big commerce course, but maybe I could take it a step further. You see, in our question and answer this week, I might say it's a bit of a softball question, but in reality, what we're looking to do is start expanding our vision, our understanding of where Adobe is taking the commerce product. Whether you agree with it or not, it is what it is. And I'm pretty excited about what this is shaping up to be, where this is headed. So without further ado, let's jump into our knowledge bite for this week. You are tasked with creating a centralized capacity value so that visitors can efficiently sort products. You are excited about how a new, the new Adobe services fit into this picture. Which Adobe service receives events from Adobe Commerce? All right, we have three different events here or different types of services that Adobe is offering with the Adobe Commerce platform. And it's, I wanna call out, these are all included in the Commerce license fee. Uh, so there's no additional, now I mean there might be some limits and as such that there might be some additional costs if you use some high throughput. But at the end of the day, this is included with the base Commerce uh, license. So we have three options here, Adobe Mesh, Adobe IO and Adobe Catalog Service. This was an interesting uh, question this week when we put it out on the social media platforms. Uh, we got a lot of views, a lot of people were looking at it, but not many answers. And this told me that this is a incredibly important area for merchants and developers to know a little bit more about. I'll give you the answer right here and now it's this. Answer is B, Adobe IO. Like I said, this is a softball question, not really going into much detail on this one simply because, yeah, uh, it's just not that well known. But what I'd like to do here is I would like to jump into a conversation about what these different meanings, what these different products mean. Like how do they actually fit into the big picture? So I spent a little time working on putting together a overly simplified diagram. Uh, it is a, like I said, it's overly simplified, but I verified with a good buddy of mine at Adobe that this is correct. So we can start building our knowledge off of this starting point. It's really, really valuable here. So let's take a look at this diagram. Okay, we are all very well familiar with this part of the F equation. Like, that's what our that's what our questions have been based off of for the past I don't know how many years I've been doing this. Um, we know this commerce front end and back end, kind of like the the back of my hand here. Like it's 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 very well known. Now, obviously, the learning curve is steep, et cetera. And that's what my goal is to help people overcome. We have that with our Magento 101 course, all that. This is what some people call the monolith. It's basically four to eight million lines of code, and yeah, there's a lot to know about it, but Let's take a look at the, uh, well, that would be the right side of this uh, graph here to get a better picture as far as how this all looks. So on the right side of this conversation is what I specifically calling out as Adobe IO. That is the product name. That is the answer to this question. Now, the way this works is Adobe IO serves as a link between commerce and App Builder. You've probably heard the name App Builder, but basically it's a hosting environment by Adobe for, to my understanding, I don't think you can do any other type of application there, but it's React applications. Um, I believe it's powered by, uh, well, Node.js. Uh, and so maybe you could put in a different type of application in there. I have not tried to do anything otherwise. So um, you could try as an experiment. That'd be interesting to see how that works. But basically App Builder is application hosting. So the way this works is when you install this extra module into Adobe Commerce, it can then send these events through Adobe IO and it's basically considered like a API for receiving, for transporting these events from Adobe Commerce over to App Builder. That's, a, that's IO, fancy term for basically a module that communicates to an API. But what's unique about this is that this module is uh, essentially transporting these Magento events. Look at it in the old days as, um, re re well, you could look at it as a replacement for RabbitMQ. App Builder can essentially be a asynchronous job runner. Now, we're gonna talk about other uses for App Builder here in a bit, but ultimately, Adobe IO is basically the communication link 
between this front end or this, well, actually Adobe Commerce itself, the back end in reality, and it is uh, between that and App Builder. Consider uh, this link to facilitate transactions like RabbitMQ, asynchronous background processing, which is pretty important overall. Now, the thing is with App Builder though, it is basically a separate, fully separate application. So while I, Adobe IO connects to App Builder and you can use the REST API and for example, the repositories to connect back to commerce, App Builder represents a, consider like a, a separate application or separate module. We've all heard the term microservices being thrown around, but this is basically ends up being a firewall between Adobe Commerce and whatever customization or custom background logic that needs to happen. Now, App Builder can talk to internal applications. It can talk to, as we'll see here in a second, it was already on the screen, but Adobe Catalog Service. Uh, it can talk to um, an ERP. It could talk to a, a PIM, Product Information Manager. It, it, it can talk to anything. Uh, and so the key thing here is that a, a App Builder sits in it like a se basically a se it's a separate application, though that's firewalled off from Adobe Commerce. Well, what value does this provide to Adobe Commerce? The value here is Adobe Commerce is now upgradable. It's considered like a software as a service. It's very robust, has a lot of features, but it becomes software as a service. Uh, the idea is that there's very little customizations that need to happen to this. Now, then we can go down the rabbit trail of like, okay, let's say we do want to customize the order display. How does that work? Well, uh, the reality is, is that it's kind of not to be customized at that point. Um, and the way it works with other software as a service platforms, if you want to customize it, you have to use the API and uh, build your own interface that handles this customization. So the core, the idea is that we're, Magento is locking up this core product and the pushback there obviously is, well, that's the whole selling point of Adobe Commerce is customization. Well, they're answering this in a separate way. You see, what a lot of the community has asked for is how we, we want a more upgradable Adobe Commerce. It's like saying back in the 1900s, in my opinion, saying we want a we want faster uh, ho horses or faster buggies, more efficient. And Henry Ford invented the Model T, right? And that, that same application can be pulled forward to today. Adobe Commerce ends up being, it will be for the most part walled off. Like it's not gonna happen tomorrow, but that's the way that this is trending. We would all agree that the core Adobe Commerce platform is highly upgradable. It's very robust, very performant, except for a couple areas. And we'll talk about that here in a second. So what's ended up happening is that App Builder is going to be the location for all these customizations. It's firewalled off. Instead of your application, your customizations having to work with four to eight million, depending on how you want to count it, lines of code. Instead, this is going to work with I don't know, however many lines of code in your application. If you have a simple application, not very many. If you have a complex application, more, but still it makes integration testing and other autom types of automated testing much, much easier. And this is already sounding pretty good as it is. Well, the question is then, how do we get this type of information back down to Adobe Commerce? Well, that is where the GraphQL mesh comes in. So, App Builder is consider, consider like this, this is just a hosting environment for a React type of application. Well, gra the GraphQL mesh comes in as basically marrying these different types of data sources. So, rabbit trail here. We were taught, this original question was talking about unifying capacity values. What would it look like if instead of keeping all this as customizable logic on Adobe Commerce. So, so basically we have built a new module. If we, what would it look like if we were to do this in App Builder? Well, it actually is kind of cool. So with App Builder, we would stand up a separate database outside of App Builder that we would then reference. So technically speaking, it could be any type of database. You could use Amazon or Firebase or anything. And basically consider it would be a, uh, like say for example, a SKU as the SKU as a column, and then you would have the um, unified capacity sort value column. So then what happens is when a request is made from the front end to see, find out what these capacity, unified capacity values are. So again, 
the unified capacity is let's say we sell garbage cans and dumpsters and the dumpsters are in cubic feet and the garbage cans are in gallons or liters. Uh, we have to unify that so someone can sort and say, hey, I want to find um, containers within this range here. App Builder slash GraphQL Mesh at this point would fetch the product results from Adobe Catalog Service right here. And it's going to then mesh or combine the values from our external database, these unified uh, capacity values. And it's going to then return that to the front end, just like we see in this GraphQL request here. This represents an entirely different paradigm of thinking. And I understand it can seem scary. It can seem unique. Uh, it can be is different than we've always done it. But I am really excited to see how this is ultimately going to play out in the future. To be honest, I'm scratching the surface here. And as also, to be honest, this is a very overly simplified diagram. We'll be putting this on our website as well uh, to make it a little easier to digest. Very simplified here, but I hope this starts presenting the picture of what is capable what you are capable as an application developer and how this helps increase the stability of the core Adobe Commerce product. Now, I understand we have not addressed all situations here, all contingencies, all types of customizations. We'll be talking about that here a little bit more in the future. But at the end of the day, I hope you have found this helpful as just trying to bust open those doors just a little bit to see where Adobe Commerce is headed and how this is all going to play out. Just so you know, I'm not being paid by Adobe to do this in the slightest. I have caught a vision or caught the vision, you might say, for where this is headed. Uh, and to be honest, some of this has come through uh, my study of big commerce, which kind of started blowing those doors open. And then I came full circle to see this is where Adobe's headed. And it's really exciting. I am really happy to see some of this progress that it's making. We're actually looking how we can start implementing some of this in our own projects that we've handled for our clients. Uh, and at the end of the day, let's see where this is headed. But the first step is we got to have a broad overview as far as how this works and look forward in the coming months to see a little bit more about how this works.